at the end, we'll have uh, David actually do the drawing for us. And with that, I'd like to introduce David Lawson with Squad Genius. Uh, I'm anxious to hear what he's got to say. I spent a lot of years coaching my son's basketball teams in the Y Leagues. And having a tool like this would have been very, very handy. I, I wish I would have had it now. Not sure we had cell phones then, let alone. <laughs> anyway, David, thank you for being here, and uh, thank you for bringing our excellent breakfast treats this morning. And I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Can you this off? Can you hear me okay? Is it on? Okay. So uh, I'm David Wasson. Um, I'm with Squad Genius. Um, thank you, Steve, for organizing this. And um, I came to one of these, I think, three months ago, and this is a really great group. Um, talked to a bunch of people afterwards. Um, I really, really appreciate how much you support um, entrepreneurship. I've been watching um, the YouTube videos, and all the questions that we ask is really excellent. I'd like to thank um, Darren with Penology um, Inc. He's not here today, but he's the one that told me about this, and um, he's how he's how I found out about this and why I'm here. So I'll kind of tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I have a computer science degree from the University of Nebraska. I'm a web developer. The technical term would be I'm a full stack web developer, which means I take something from, I can do the server part of it to the back end code to the front end code. Um, so that's, that's what I do as a job. Um, I've done solo projects where I've made just a, a website that does like inventory control, um, inventory management system, marketplaces, um, auction sites. I've worked with teams where I've been the lead developer of two or three people. Um, so that's kind of a background on me. Um, with Squad Genius, I'm the technical co-founder, so I'm, I'm the one with the technical background. The other co-founder is Zach Spencer. He um, owns an indoor sports facility in Sacramento. He's originally from, from Lincoln, and he went to high school in Waverly. Um, the two of us have worked on other startups in the past, and we always kind of wanted to do something that was, that was our two of us working on one thing. So um, once he created his indoor facility, we kind of um, started thinking about like what we could do in the sports space. We talked to a lot of different people, um, heard about the problems they had, um, heard about parents and coaches really unsatisfied with the tools that the league they were in was, were giving them, and we decided that we would make our own solution. Um, so I'll kind of tell you how, uh, you know, we, so we, we looked at what was out there, we did a lot of research, and we kind of noticed that there was kind of an evolution where um, probably 20 years ago, there was websites people started using <coughs> instead of just email. And then over time, they became like mobile responsive websites, which would look good on a phone and a laptop. And then when smartphones came out, those companies, if they didn't adapt, they kind of went away. So everyone went to an iPhone app and an Android app. So we kind of knew that we had to make all three because that's what parents are used to. They're used to just having a simple app where they're automatically logged in, they click on the app and they can see what's happening with their kids. So um, so once we decided what we were gonna make, um, it was kind of a struggle for about a year to really find a way to make it. Um, I'm a developer myself, but making an iPhone app, an Android app, and a website as one person would take a tremendous amount of time. So um, we, we looked at getting partnerships with different development firms in the US. Um, we didn't have a tremendous amount of success um, through a friend of Zach's, we met Carl, and uh, I can never thank Carl enough. Um, Carl and Sarah Vonin are two guys that were trying to find a startup to help. Um, Sarah Vonin is originally from India, and the firm that he worked for in India before he came to America wanted to have the very first product they made with a US customer, and Carl and Sarah Vonin wanted to have like a success story, so they worked with us for free, um, spent tons of time with us starting about February 2017, um, we got a GoToMeeting account so we could all communicate together. Um, we would communicate with people offshore, and we started like specifying this this whole thing that we wanted to make. Um, in April of last year, I flew to Sacramento, and Zach and I, we sketched on pencil and paper every single screen of the app. We um, spent like 30 hours over three days, and then once we had that all done, we had this giant like 400-page Google document that described everything that we were going to make. Um, so after that, um, things got kind of interesting. In May of last year, I got an opportunity through, through a friend of mine. There's a company here locally that's very interested in making something like this. And they um, offered me the opportunity to potentially make that internally to their, in their company. So I would work for them. Um, they had a tremendous amount of resources. So I had to decide if we would um, go that route 
or if I, you know, and I would leave the team that I had built, um, all these relationships that I'd made. And I really, Zach and I really wanted to have something that was the two of us um, creating it together, seeing where we could go with that. So we decided to, to go all in. We um, started paying for developers offshore. We started paying for all the things you need to run it, like um, AWS, which is Amazon Web Services, GitHub, go to meeting all those uh, monthly fees. So, uh, so yeah, so in June, um, the coding actually began. And um, real quickly, I learned that our developers in India are incredibly hardworking. Um, they're very responsive. Every time I would point out a bug or anything, they would, they would fix it as fast as they could. They were all, um, at the price range we're at, they were all like very junior developers. So um, I was really impressed with how much they learned and how quickly they learned it. They started from the very beginning of learning something, and in a brief amount of time, they um, got really far along in the project. We, um, the other thing that I learned was that the paper sketches that we had made, they were not uh, detailed enough. So um, what we had to do was begin sketching them using, um, there's a program called Sketch, which I've used before. So I started creating very high quality sketches of every single screen in the app. And like one screen in the app could have 20 different variations for how someone could use it. So I'd have to make, uh, over last summer and fall, I made 200 different screens with many different variations and I would document exactly what it, we want it to look like. I would provide very detailed instructions and that's, that's when everything really started moving uh, more quickly. So uh, kind of fast forward to this year, um, our website launched in a beta form in March and um, our iOS app was approved. So that's like the iPhone app that was approved by the App Store in May. And um, our Android app is in the approval process right now with the Google Play Store. We have a production version we can give to people uh, that they can use, but we're still going through that process. Um, some interesting things that we've had this year is, um, I don't know how many are familiar with the IO Summit with um, Brian Ardinger here in town. So I'm gonna take a drink of water. So he, uh, He's a great resource that we have here. So we're really lucky to have him here. That The summit he has is a tremendous thing for entrepreneurship and startups and corporate innovation. So I'm, I ran into him at um, a UX meetup like two weeks before that. And I didn't know if we were really ready. And so for about a week, I kind of thought about it. And then I was like, Zach, you know, there's not very many chances where there's this kind of opportunity in, in my hometown. So. We were the last startup to apply. Um, it started on a Tuesday. We applied on a Thursday night. We got accepted on a Friday morning. Um, we spent the weekend um, creating a pitch because there was uh, 10 startups that were gonna compete for $120,000. So um, I was actually out of town, Zach was in Sacramento. So we collaborated on the phone. We shared PowerPoint presentations. Um, so over a weekend, I just kind of prepared the, the brochure that I have that everyone has. I made that um, that weekend and just printed out a whole bunch of these at home, and I have leftovers, so I brought them today. <laughs> and um, so, so yeah, so I, I did the, the IO Summit. Um, there was a startup showcase. I learned a ton in that, and, and the year, well, not quite a year, but the year I spent just kind of the grind of the product development part of it, um, it really refocused me on customers and thinking about you know, why we originally made this, um, all the people we talked to, the pains they told us about. And um, the, in the Startup Showcase, there's judges <coughs> that they, um, they ask you a lot of questions. So just from that whole process, I learned a lot. Um, we did not, there was four startups that were picked on the floor for the contest. We weren't one of the four that were picked. And when I watched the pitch competition the next day, I was really kind of glad because, um, you know, that one weekend wasn't enough to prepare us. Um, the other interesting thing since then, um, we got accepted by the Nmotion Startup Academy here in town. I don't know how many are familiar with Nmotion, but it's it's a really great organization. Um, Carlos Estrada is a new executive director, if, if I'm right on his title, and I've talked to him a few times. Every time I've talked to him, he's given me really great advice, um, really focus on um, customers, what they tell you. Um, so I've been in this Startup Academy for five weeks now. It's the uh, first time they've done an academy, and it's kind of designed for um, people that still have a job, that have a business idea they want to explore, and you, they have you talk to as many people as you can to kind of validate that there really is the, the problem you think there is. And then while you're interviewing people, you may discover new things that you didn't know existed. 
um, I really recommend um, that for anyone that has an idea they want to explore further. Um, I have three weeks left. It's really been great. Emmy Hernandez is the the coach or the leader of it. Um, she's been she's been really great. It's they kind of call it a boot camp, so it's tough and unfair all at the same time. Um, so I'll kind of tell you a little bit about what we've made so far. So we um, so as I said, it's a it's a website and an iPhone app and an Android app, which will be coming out soon. And so if you're a coach um, and you want to communicate with your team. You can put in, your, everyone in your roster, you can put in all the parents, you can connect as many guardians to a child as you want, and then you can um, email or text message. Um, you can email everyone or text message everyone. You can pick just individuals, you can pick just groups. So if you have assistant coaches, you can just communicate with just the coaches. Um, if you have someone that leaves the team, if you remove them from the team, and, and then you don't send them emails anymore. So it's kind of, it kind of manages all that. Um, the, the biggest thing that we heard from all the coaches, which I've been a coach as well, is that um, when you have to pay as a coach for something, like there's a tournament, or uh, a good example would be like a Parks and Rec um, softball team. There's one person that pays the city like $300, and then they spend the next so many months <laughs> um, trying to collect from people. So what we've done is we make it so that if you're in that sort of situation, um, you create a payment request and you pick all the people that owe the money. So for instance, if you want $100 from everyone, um, there's a simple form you fill out on our site which connects it to your bank account. When they pay, the, they'll, um, you can set them up to get an automatic reminder every day or every week. <laughs> so they'll just get an email. And right now it's, it's 3.15 every day is when my phone blows up for all the test ones I've created where I get all the reminders. And it's, um, they start to learn, like you kind of feel as a coach, you just kind of feel like you're bugging people, and this kind of takes the personality out of it. It's just an automatic email every week or every day at the same time. Pretty soon they figure out that it's not you personally hounding them. Um, and if they if they just click on the link on the email and they want the convenience of that, then it goes right to a screen where they can pay with card. If they pay with a card, that's how Squad Genius makes money. Our app is free. Um, we take a small fee of that. So for instance, if it's $100 you're asking for, um, $100 will get per put in that person's account or that nonprofit's account, and um, about $5 in service charges that person will have to pay on top of that, and we get like 2% of that. So um, that's, that's another um, part of, that's the big pain point we're solving. Um, the other thing that we, you can do with our app is you can track attendance, so if you have a game coming up, you can see um, everyone can mark their availability so they can tell you like yes, no, maybe if they're able to come. Um, we also have some, some fun things. There's Every event has a photo album. So everyone from the team is a private photo, photo album. They can all upload pictures. They can tag people. Um, there's no, we give them trophies instead of likes, but there's no, there's no down vote. It's just all positive. You can also, as a coach, you can give virtual awards. To, to anyone on the team. So you can give one to a parent for just helping out. Um, it's just like a little icon. It'll show up on their profile. Um, if you have challenges for a team, like for instance, say soccer, you have a challenge where you want, you know, if they can do 50, if they can bubble, juggle the ball 50 times without hitting the ground, you could make up an award for that. That would show up on the kid's profile. Um, yeah, so that's, um, that's the main thing. The other real big thing that we noticed is there's a lot of apps where you have multiple kids in sports. You have to go to like each and every team to see what's happening. We combine that all into one feed, kind of like a Facebook feed. So when you first open up like the home feed of our app, it'll show you all the events. And if you scroll up, you'll see things in the future. If you scroll down, you'll see things in the past. The schedule screen combines everything all into one place. Um, the big difference with ours is it's, it's also free. Um, some of the apps charge you, charge parents $2 a month to combine everything into one. Um, so that's, that's what we've made so far. Um, our next steps are to, uh, you know, get everything out. Um, what my ask from anyone here would be is if you know anyone that's connected to uh, a sports organization that would willing, be willing to do an interview with me, I'm really kind of exploring the idea of making a solution for, for um, any kind of sports league or sports club or facility. I'm um, finding out what their needs are, what their problems are. Um, competitive coaches are always great to talk to too, or any kind of coach. Um, that's that's where we're at now. And can turn over to questions. I've got a couple. Yeah. <laughs>
can you, on the payments, when they owe you money, can you threaten playing time? <laughs> <laughs> the coaches can always do that, but yeah. especially if it's an adult team. And is there a uh, way to track? I mean, that was one of my biggest headaches as a coach. I went out of my way to make sure every kid got to play the same amount of time, they got to start the same number of times. Yes. Is there a way to keep track so of that? So that's, that's a really great thing you brought up. That is actually the next feature we're coming out with. We're making um, a game management tool that tracks playing time. So the way it'll work is you have, you basically drag and drop people on the field. So if it's soccer, for instance, um, there'll be a running clock for every single person. And when someone's on the bench, it'll sort the bench by who's played the least amount of time. So you'll always see who, who should be up next. Um, if you click on someone, you can store their stats. So like you can click on um, Marla, I coach her team. I can click on Marla, put that she scored a goal. There'll be a log that said at 14 minutes into the game, Marla scored a goal. Um, click on her, her teammate that helped her with the assist, they'll store that. So we, um, that should be part of our website in the next couple weeks. See, that would be awesome, because then when I get the parents complain about playing, yes. <laughs> yes. But if you don't play, if, but the other side is, if you have this thing and you actually don't play it on the same, the parents are going to see it. <laughs> so who enters all that data during the game time? So it could be uh, like an assistant coach. Um, the way that app will work is it, it'll be one person that, that that time will be running. And then everyone that looks at the app will see like kind of an event log. So they'll see the stats as they go in like minute by minute, but there'll be one person that'll have, it'll just be, um, you know, you got the players on the field, the players on the bench, and they can kind of like drag and drop them. And then when they click like make substitutions, it swaps everything and then it swaps the time. So it stops the times for people that come off, starts the time for people that go on. Yeah, if you click on them and, and um, it depends on the application, but some of them, like you click on them, you have two choices. You can either sub or you can do a stat. So you, then a stat window comes up and you can put goal, assist, whatever. Yeah, Mike. So just to be clear, it's not only for soccer, correct? It could be for any sport. Um, I'm actually, um, if anyone knows anyone from uh, like a dance studio or something, like the reason we call this Squad Genius is that we didn't want to be just team only oriented, so our, our like, our motto is uh, manage any team, group, or squad. So it could be anything that needs organization where you have more than two people, um, you communicate. Um, if you collect payments, that's good for us because that's the way we make money. Um, yeah. Yeah. Have you talked to or conversated with or anything with Huddle? Not yet. Um, I kind of feel like Huddle eventually will make something like this. Yeah, I mean, they, they so, have an offering for, as you know, for youth sports, club sports versus college and, and yeah. high school. But yeah, sounds like some kind of yeah. natural. I, I hope we get some traction before um, this gets too, the Huddle gets too far along in that. <laughs> in the back. So how many different sports or groups do you have in your system? So right now, the, when you pick the sport, when you create a team, I, uh, I made the list based on, I just looked for every, um, every sport that had an organization behind it. So there's all, kind of, like there's even Quidditch, because there's an actual like National Quidditch <laughs> League. So that's how I made the first list, but I'm always open, like if I'm missing something, we can easily add it in. So like if you have a, say a midget football team. Yeah. And you would be able to, is it already programmed in that you can put, that they had a tackle or an assist or? An interception. So those things in there already. Y or does your customer have to go in and customize what they wanted to do? So, so this will be our first version. So we're, we're going to look for a lot of feedback from people. But what we've done is um, we have probably ten sports where we pick very specific stats, and football is one of them. And then we have kind of a general that just covers the ones that we don't know well enough. So the general one would just be like points, um, defense, like whatever you want to consider it. I think as we get feedback from from users, we'll. Um, you know, refine it from there. Uh, over time, we'll probably need to make a more baseball, softball centric one because those sport, you know, sports where there's not a constant flow are very different than, than sports where there's a constant flow. So over time, we'll have to make um, different ones. Our, our team of developers in India, they know cricket real well, and that's a huge sport. Um, so they're going to help us with that part, with the stats on that. So, um, have you approached the cheerleading? Well, that's huge. yeah that's another one where I've been talking to parents and that's something that's been brought up to me so along with dance studios I'd really like to start talking to um, cheerleading squads tons of communication 
Um, especially those kind of dance and cheer, there's like all these extra expenses. So anytime there's one person that has to pay the whole bill for something and they're trying to collect from people, that's a really good group to talk to. Um, right? It sounds like you talked to a lot of people. Did you have a marketing research plan or some sort of marketing research angle that you were, how did you connect with all of these individuals? Um, so I, uh, I just kind of researched. So I started, re recently I started with baseball and softball because I know that their season just kind of ended. And um, I researched every single organization in the Lincoln area and I emailed and cold called every single one of them. And um, I've gotten interviews with um, people fairly high up from I think six or seven organizations so far. And then I've talked to lots of coaches. And now I'm getting to a point where I'm getting so many people referring me so many names. It's just keeping up with all that. I'm actually thinking about using Salesforce just to track all, all the contacts I have. So, yeah, so it's a good problem to have. Okay. Mike? So, my business partner is a former minor league baseball player. He's got a lot of connections in baseball. And he knows the people that run the baseball, all, pretty much all of the youth baseball in Des Moines and Kansas City, like 3 and 2 baseball. Okay. So, so, they run tons of leagues. They do all of it. One of them is a former major league baseball player in Des Moines. Do you want to break into those markets? Do you want to learn from those people what they might need? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Because he could probably make that connection. Yeah, yeah, and I'd love to have. Um, you know, as many beta users. I mean, if people want to use the app with a fake team just to give us feedback or with a real team. Yeah, like the Des Moines folks are for profit, but they work with the city of Des Moines very closely. The yeah. Former Major League Baseball player guy. But the one in Kansas City is a nonprofit. Okay. Yeah, but it's been around for like 50 years or something. Yeah. Yeah, I've been talking to organizations, and, um, you know, you have to get, anytime you do this, you need to get a lot of different input from a lot of different places because some people are totally satisfied with what they have. Um, and there's just lots, lots of different needs. There's leagues where they're really, really focused on keeping their prices really low so that it's accessible to as many kids as possible. Um, there's more competitive leagues where there's travel, so parents kind of understand that it's going to cost more. So you, I'm really just kind of learning about like what different kinds of organizations want. Um, Can you talk to an organization like Lincoln Parks and Rec? I have. Okay. Yeah, I had an interview with someone from Lincoln Parks and Rec last week. Because there, there's a three-year table because they collect fees. Yeah. yeah. So if you work with that, now you're talking multiple sports and activities. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so I had a really great interview with someone from there, and I'm gonna keep following that. I have um, I've interviews lined up with someone from um, Hickman's Parks and Rec, so they just kind of get a totally different perspective of a smaller community. How about special Olympics? I haven't tried that. Okay. Okay. In, in the back. How did you determine that you could make money by only charging any time a financial transaction went through? So we haven't determined that yet. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so, so that's not the, the so, so we have the payment platform which we make money on. And then as Mike knows, we're gonna look into making apparel, like letting people buy apparel through our application. So that's, that's one of the next, um, so we have this game management tool is the next feature that's coming out. The one after that will be a coaching resources. Um, it's actually like any resources for anyone that could be free, like a free plan on how to coach a team, different ages, different kinds of sports. And eventually we'd like to explore the possibility of um, how many people are willing to pay for a premium. So you get the first like two weeks of a season for coaching your kid's soccer team for free. And then you think it's really great and it's 20 bucks for the rest of it. So we're exploring that as another way to make money. We're exploring selling apparel, um, spirit wear, um, you know. So those are those are avenues we're exploring. We've made a really um, basic advertising platform in our app right now, and um, the idea is uh, kind of like how Facebook can micro target. Um, the advertising platform we've done, um, an advertiser can pick a metro area. Um, they can they can they can pick all these. They can pick a metro area. They can pick an age range. They can pick a sport. They can pick a gender. So if you if you only wanted to advertise to people that had a girl between 14 and 16 that played volleyball in the Lincoln <laughs> metro area, your ad would only show up to people that had a person that's active in that team, in a team that meets that criteria. So that's another, you know, we, we have to have a lot more users before we can really do anything with advertising. But those are the four, the four ways we're initially looking at um, making money out of it. Jeremy. So how do you, how do you, how do you plan on policing like most of these guardians? Say it's a 
kids are holding each other and fighting or something okay. like that. I'm just kind of curious. So there's um, <coughs> the Child's Online Privacy Protection Act. <coughs> we abide by that. Um, no one can use our app that's under 13. Um, it's a 13 and only use. Um, and the other thing we have is uh, everything has a report of use. So we have a chat board that the team can all post on. We have um, messages that people can send out. So if a parent or even a coach, if someone sends out a message that someone thinks is not right or posts a picture that someone thinks is not right, they report the abuse. If it's someone from the team, both Squad Genius and the coach get an email saying that you know, if someone reported this, um, please look into it. If someone reports a coach, that's a special notification we get, and we look into that. So we're, we're, we're policing it that way. <coughs> so. Yeah? Good morning. Come a long way in a short period of time. What do you see as your biggest challenge going forward in the next 12 months? Um, we kind of need to transition to, you know, we've done what we can with very bootstrapped, um, very low budget. So. Our next goal is to, to get everything out, to, to have a couple months of trying to get as many people using it as we can, and then we're going to approach investors and try to raise a significant amount of money. Yeah, so. The biggest challenge you're going to have going forward is Yeah, so we need to, you know, we're going up against companies that have tens of millions of dollars that they throw at, at these applications just for the developers, and then marketing on top of it. So. Um, you know, we, we need to, to really up our, we need, yeah. And we've, we've had the philosophy all along that um, everything that we can do ourselves, it doesn't take a tremendous amount of time, we do ourselves. So like right now, the, the logo we have, we didn't pay a graphic designer. I'm not a very good graphic designer, but that was free, because I could just make that. Um, with money, we can do better branding. Um, we can get more developers, we can refine our app. So that's, the, I think that's the biggest challenge that's next. So you talk about other companies. What sets you apart from the pack? Um, so, so a lot of them, they go after the league first because that's a guaranteed revenue stream. Because um, if you win the league and you get a thousand kids registering at $200 a season, and you get a percentage on that, so um, we we went after the parents and the coaches. So we we focused on them too. So it's a better experience. Um, the other differentiator is a lot of the apps are a subscription model where you get. So for instance, um. One of our biggest competitors, which you know they're they're light years ahead of us right now, but they like the attendance tracking. Um, you get that for free for two weeks, and the coach, the parents will get emailed like a reminder that a game's coming up. After two weeks, that goes away. So like the first time I used one of those, I didn't know it went away. So everyone was used to like, hey, there's a game tomorrow, and then that email stopped because I didn't pay the the nine dollars a month. Um, that's how we differentiate from them. Um, the thing that we're doing with payments is different than anyone else where it actually goes right into your account. Um, you don't have to have a merchant account with fees. Like there's no fee at all on the person that has the, the bank account that it's going into. It's just, they request the money, it gets put right in their account. I've talked to other payment providers because we've been trying to lower the percentage of fees we pay and um, there's very few that can do. We picked one solution and it was pretty complex to get set up. So I guess that's one big advantage we have. Not to say that the $100 million companies could just do that. We're, we're ahead of for now on that. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah, we'll be back. You Final talked question. about the uh, uh, people in India that you worked with yeah. and how good a job they did for you. Could you talk about what it is about the Indian experience or expertise as compared to the American that makes them attractive? Yeah. For us, it's, it's cost. Um, we, we, we could never afford you know, two guys just funding it ourselves. We could have never afford developers here. Um, I think using offshore developers, the, the, the group we have, they work really hard. Um, it's a great way to prototype something and make the beginning version of something. Over time, I'd like to continue prototyping things offshore and then having US developers um, that really refine. Um, after, after we got feedback from customers, we use our own team of developers here in the states to to really improve and refine. But but offshore, you know, when you're trying to just find out if something makes sense, if it works, and customers react to it, you want to spend the least amount you can. And that, I think that's cost. yeah, you know, the cost. So that's why we chose to go that route. And really, it was the only way forward for us. Um, you know, I had those two choices. One would have been 
you know, that would use a bunch of US developers, that would be really great. Um, so, so we, yeah, I wanted to see where this went. And it's been fun. I've learned a ton. Thank you. Yeah. Well, David, thank you so much. That was great. Yeah. Thank you for speaking. We'd like to present you with a Focus Suite mug. Thank you. And now we'd like to have you pick the winner of our free service here. Ingrid Trust, or first, did I say that right? Wow. First. Very good. Thank you very right. much. With that, uh, please feel free to hang around as long as you like. Uh, there's no need to run off. Um, meet somebody new before you leave. Exchange business cards. Come up and ask David more questions if you have them. Um, if not, we'll see you again next week, and we appreciate your presence.